Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. August 16th, 2020, and I'm actually here at Maple Leaf Lutheran Church, wishing you were all with us this morning. Let's begin worship this morning with a prayer. Please join me. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and consistency that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing together our opening hymn. Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is not does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness for the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Today's Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 10 through 28. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense? when they heard what you said? Jesus answered, 
Every plant that my Heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind guides. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to Jesus, explain this parable to us. And Jesus said, are you still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth goes into the stomach and out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands, that does not defile. Then Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And just then a Canaanite woman from the region came and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was instantly healed. Holy wisdom, holy word. Over the last several months, I've been sharing with you at the end of these video worship services some blessings by Jan Richardson. This morning, I want to share one with you, and it's called Stubborn Blessing, but it kind of feels a little bit more like a poem or a letter to God. Take a listen. Don't tell me no. I have seen you feed the thousands. Seen miracles spill from your hands, like water, like wine. Seen you with circles and circles of crowds pressed around you, and not one soul turned away. Don't start with me. I am saying you can, you can close the door, but I will keep knocking. You can go silent, but I will keep shouting. You can tighten the circle, but I will trace a bigger one around you, around the life of my child who will tell you no one surpasses a mother for stubbornness. I am saying I know what you can do with crumbs, and I am claiming mine. Every morsel and scrap you have up your sleeve. Unclench your hand your heart. Let the scraps fall like manna, like mercy, for the life of my child, for the life of the world. Don't you tell me no. I think that's wonderful and powerful. And it relates to the gospel reading we have before us this morning, the gospel reading that is both troubling and inspiring. We're told that Jesus took a trip to uh, si Tyre and Sidon, and right when they arrived, they had barely arrived, a Canaanite woman comes up to Jesus and 
falls on her knees and pleads to Jesus and says, Master, show mercy. My daughter is cruelly afflicted by an evil spirit. She comes to him asking for healing for her daughter. And what does Jesus do? He ignores her. <laughs> and this is just the beginning of how this story is troubling. So the disciples come to Jesus and complain and say, now she's bothering us. Can you just take care of her or tell her to go, to, go away or something? She's driving us crazy. <laughs> and it, Jesus refuses and he tells them, I've, I've got my hands full dealing with the lost sheep of Israel. And basically what he's saying is her concerns are or her needs are no concerns of his. But then the master comes back to Jesus and gets on her knees and begs him, Master, help me. And Jesus says to her, it's not right to take bread out of children's mouths and throw it to the dogs. Can you believe it? I told you this was troubling. Jesus calls her a dog basically here. And it's not like some nice, cuddly little house pet you might have. Dogs back then were considered dirty and unclean and roaming the streets. This is an insult. Jesus insults her. But she persists. When he insults her with this derogatory term, he likens this woman, her daughter, and all of her kind, all these Canaanites, to dogs begging for scraps at the table. But this is what she does. This is how she answers. You're right, master, but beggar dogs do get scraps from the master's table. And with that, Jesus changes his mind. Oh, woman, your faith is something else, he says. What you want has been granted. And at that moment, her daughter becomes well. So today, I want to talk to you about a wonderful tradition that I think has become lost. Arguing with God. Challenging God. Talking back to God. Speaking your mind to God. The Jewish people have done this for centuries, millennium. And unfortunately, I think, in the Christian world, we have lost that ability to argue with God, to talk with God in a way that some might think of as being disrespectful. In scripture, we see this long and proud history and tradition of people arguing with God a lot, a lot of times. I think probably the most famous of all of these accounts is Abraham. Do you remember good old Abraham back when uh, God said that God's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And Abraham challenges him. Abraham says, Lord, what if you find 50 righteous people in the city? Will you still destroy them? And God replies by saying, if I find 50 righteous people, I will spare the entire area. Well, God doesn't find 50 righteous people. And so Abraham continues his bargaining. What about 45? If you find 45, will you spare? God says, yes, but they're not found. So this bargaining goes on and on. 40 people, 30 people, 20 people, 10 people. Lord, if you find 20 or 10 righteous people in this city, will you spare the entire city? Well, <laughs> Apparently, there are not 10 people, 10 righteous people in this city. And at one point during this argument with God, Abraham has the audacity to shout out to God, shall the judge of the whole world not act justly? That's pretty bold. And then think of other people who challenge God. Moses is a good example. When Moses is told by God that he's to go to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go, Moses doesn't want to do it. He comes up with all this list of reasons why he's not able to go. And he argues with God. He says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? That one doesn't work. So he says, but they won't believe me. And then he says, I'm not a man of words. 
he's arguing and arguing and finally in the end Moses tells God to send anyone but himself but we all know how that one ended Moses ended up going and think about Job the famous book of Job that he demands to confront God and know the reason for all of his suffering he angrily rails against this injustice declaring to God that God destroys the innocent and the wicked how is that fair Job even adds God may well slay me I may have no hope yet I will argue my case before God and then in the Psalms, we have this famous Psalm, Psalm 13, where the psalmist cries out, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. And the psalm goes on from there. He's not afraid to argue with God, to challenge God, to question God. We see this boldness continued in the faithful in the New Testament, where people argue with Jesus, even challenging the actions of Jesus. Remember when uh, her brother Lazarus dies, Mary famously confronts Jesus and says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I kind of imagine her always saying that with a little edge in her voice, a little anger at Jesus. And then when Jesus talks about how he's going to go to Jerusalem and die, Peter confronts him and says, Lord, forbid it. This must never happen to you challenging Jesus right there. And then today we have this famous account of this Canaanite woman calling Jesus out, not taking no for an answer, saying, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Arguing with God is not disrespectful. Wrestling with God is part of faith. Having a living, real relationship with God is not about easy answers. Faith is about a relationship, about the dialogue, the back and forth conversation that we have with God. When we find things in the Bible that we don't like, when we see things in church that we don't agree with, when we question God or our faith, we are called to engage in those struggles and wrestle with the questions they pose. God can handle it. It takes great faith to argue with God. The Canaanite woman didn't give in. She argu argued her case and wouldn't take no for an answer. And she was praised by Jesus for her tenacity and for her faith. May we be so bold in our life of faith. Amen.
for our prayer petitions this morning. Each one will end with the phrase, Lord, in your mercy. And you're invited to respond. Hear our prayer. Confident in your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soil stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to sing and be glad with joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing. Especially today, we lift up Judith and Chris. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you go out into the world this day and into the week and into the coming months and years, receive this blessing. Neither death nor life, angels or rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love, now and forever. Amen.
go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.